Hello, thank you for joining us on Call TV News at 4. Hi, I'm Frank Omalapi, and here are some of the reports we're filing at this time. Uh, Borono State Deputy Governor Zanel Maro Mustafa is dead. A statement by the Secretary of the Borno State Government, Al Haji Yusman Shua, on Saturday added that the deceased was scheduled to visit the Borono State indigents who are quartered in, in the internally displaced persons camps in Yola. The late Deputy Governor died in his sleep. Uh, this morning in Yola, Dabongo State Capital, where he was to represent Borno State Governor at the convocation ceremony of Modibo at, at Dama University of Science and Technology, Yola. He was also scheduled to follow up on his earlier visit to Yola in connection with the welfare of Borno State citizens in eternally displaced as a result of the Boko Haram insurgency. Kashim Shitima, the Governor of Borno State, has expressed his heart felt condolence to the family of the deputy governor and the entire people of Borno State for the irreplaceable and irreparable loss and appealed for prayers for the repose of the soul of the late deputy governor. And our Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has inaugurated a 19-man committee to conduct this assessment for the House and the National Assembly in general. Speaking while inaugurating the committee, uh, Speaker Dugara said the assessment will help determine the effective running of the legislature, especially as there are no such structures in place at present. He also urged them to undertake a comparative study of cost of an efficient legislature, including cost of conducting public hearings, as well as build, equipping, and maintaining National Assembly infrastructure. Uh, the committee, which has three weeks to present its report, comprises civil society groups, professional bodies, and independent groups, and its chair, right activist Clement Wanko. And now, the member of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Yusuf, has advised his colleagues in the National Assembly to reset their priority and help block wastage in the governance. The lawmaker, who is representing Kaba Budo, in Jimu constituency was speaking against the backdrop of allegations of disagreement among federal legislators on pay cuts. He told journalists at the National Assembly complex that any move towards cutting salary only amounts to playing to the glory. The salary of every public officer is fixed by physical and uh, every non-fiscal responsibility. And the salary of, uh, I sincerely, because of deduction, listening to because of deductions, uh, the car loan deduction, housing deduction, and what have you. So throughout your tenure, you might not even get your salary complete. So the salary of a lawmaker of a House of Rep member should be returning to 1.1 million error. But I doubt if you can get up to 900,000 throughout your tenure. Why? Because you'll be given a housing loan and you'll be given a car loan at the beginning, which will be deducted every month. So where you will say salary cut, I think, like I said earlier, what we need to do uh, is to look to rejig and reprioritize. Uh, and cut wastage. Maybe you travel four times for something that you have traveled just once for. Those are the things you need to cut. Now, the crisis that broke out in the Benin State chapter of the All Progressive Congress in the aftermath of the nomination and election of Governor Samuel Otom has been laid to rest. Briefing newsmen at the party secretariat, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dugara, disclosed that all the contending parties have been reconciled. He noted that all court cases instituted by a group party members over Rotom's nomination have been withdrawn. The family is to see the need why Benway State must move ahead and make steady and rapid progress, and why APC must actualize the dreams of the people for a better life, and why the leaders of the party here must bury the hatchet and work together to further the hope for a glorious future for this beautiful state that is known as the food basket of the nation. Mr. President believes that the people who can turn around the fortunes of Benway into a prosperous entity are all here in this room. He further believes that everyone here is concerned with the future of this great state and has at one time or the other made sacrifices to advance the cause 
the cause of that state. Above all, he believes that we can all come to an amicable settlement to solidify the gains of our party in the last elections. It therefore only remains for me to, on behalf of Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, to announce to you, our leaders, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press and to the whole world, the Honorable Jime and Senator Waku have graciously agreed to withdraw or discontinue the case in court. And now stakeholders of the All Progressive Congress in Imo State have met with the governor of Ho the first time since he won a second term in office. The publicity secretary of the APC in the state speaking with Court TV News said the party is elated at the governorship reception and reaffirms their support for him. Uh, in fact, in that meeting, he, he particularly also singled out for commendation. One of us in the party, the state, public, the state secretary of the party, has just been appointed as SSA to the government for his uh, you know, uh, very great performance. He's already showing within the first few weeks in office. Yes, I must say that His Excellency talked about the allowances of uh, uh, the party, people, and I assured them that. Uh, in fact, as, uh, just as we're living, he has already given a directive of at least two to, two to three months of these elements uh, paid. And now, the my bid raises his special duty, says uh, uh, former state secretary of the party, who is now senior special assistant to the governor on special duties at the meeting, received commendation by the governor for his doggedness to service. On the first appointment, the governor is begging from the party. And if the governor can rise up to say, the man you could give to me is doing well, that means other people from the party are also expected to do well. So it's a good thing for the party, and I'm sure the governor will also extend his hand to other members of the party to bring them on board and uh, make sure that things go well. Good. Thank you very much. Thank And now the National Economic Council has hired two firms to audit the accounts of all federal government's revenue earning agencies, including the Central Bank. Ado State Governor Adams Ushomala discloses to State House correspondent after a meeting of a three-man committee at the Presidential Villa Abuja. He revealed that KPMG and Price Waterhouse Cooper will be carrying out the forensic audit. Having looked at the size of the assignment and the issues that have been raised, we are convinced that we need a, a professional approach. And so we have decided to appoint two uh, audit firms, including KPMG and PWC, to carry out a forensic audit of all the agencies uh, under reference and to establish all the facts that we need and uh, at the end of the exercise government will decide what you want to do with the findings of the of the of the of the audit facts and now the crisis rocking the people's democratic party in the state on friday took another dimension with the announcement that four, the four of the party state year schools have been expelled by the state executive committees. The PDP state secretary, Tok Galako, however, said the explosion would not stand as they have no local standing to accuse him of anti party activities. Correspondent Rashid Rashid has details. For some time now, the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State has been having leadership tussle. The crisis on Friday took another twist as the party's state executive council announced the expulsion of four of the state working committee members. Tempers later fled with the development as the two factions almost clashed while addressing journalists in the state capital. The embattled PDP chairman Idu Fale, while justifying the expulsion by the state executive committee members, says the decision was in line with the party's constitution. 
However, reacting to the expulsion, the secretary of the party, Tokbe Aduko, said it's a joke, adding that the people who sat on the case are not PDP members. The committee might have presumed that they've accepted the allegation levied against them. So, they recommended that they should be expelled. And we immediately convened a meeting of the SEC again to approve it or disapprove it, and the whole house approve the expulsion. So I have no other option than to accede to the request of the, in line with the constitution, to request to, to the request of the state executive council. Now that they have been expelled, I don't think there's anything individual can do unless we come back to that state working committee to do anything otherwise. So expulsion stands. The secretary also alleged the governor Ayodele Fauci of masterminding the whole crisis in the party. I can honestly tell you that in 2012 March, we did a congress that produced us. None of these people that are talking were produced by that congress. How can an elected governor or an appointee, a nobody from labor, in terms of Komrefaleye, now start talking? About what? About PDP? They don't have any right to talk about PDP. Fauci has gone to like three, three parties. He cannot be talking about anti-party. The battle for supremacy in the state PDP has no doubt continued to tear the party apart in the state. Rashid Rashid or TV News and Doikiti. You're still watching Nicole TV News at 4. We'll take a break now. We'll be back in a moment with more stories. Stay with us. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said. Oh. And because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. But so, some people were strong for go to Balland. We'll be strong man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is gonna take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. You're watching Call TV News at 4 live from our Lagos studios. If you just join us, uh, you can also join us rather on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash Call TV News. You can also follow at Call TV News NG. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Call TV News. Leave a space, the news. And our Lagos State Government has advocated the reduction of recurrent expenditure and the increase in the capital expenditure for the achievement of an efficient budget. This, according to the Deputy Governor of the State, Idia Tadebule, will give room for successful implementation of capital projects for maximal impact on the lives of the people. The Deputy Governor, Idia Adibole, made this disclosure while speaking at the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria a symposium on the year 2015 budget with the team come back Nigeria, the nation's fiscal challenges and the way forward for the new administration. I believe that over the years, the structure of the nation's budget has not favored significant infrastructure development because previous budgetary provisions have been in favor of recurrent and expense of capital expenditure, stating that this ugly trend has been the major reason why the nation's budgets perform below expectations in the last few years. And now the Kaduna refinery is now producing at about 50% of its installed capacity with refining of 36,000 barrels of crude oil a day. The management of Kaduna refinery and petrochemical company disclosed this while taking a select team of journalists on a facility tour of the refinery. They, however, noted that the figure will hit 90% of it in store capacity by the first quarter of 2016. Ours, we are saddled here 
with the responsibility of making the assets work. And when these assets work, really a lot of downstream activities, which hitherto would be paralyzed, will all come back to fruition. Uh, even from our neighborhood here, the moment they see the flare, then you start seeing uh, some activities going on. Talk less of the downstream, what will happen to, uh, of course, the time that you waste for queuing for uh, PMS will also be eliminated. Some industries who have been having difficulty in getting uh, energy source, especially uh, fuel oil and AGO, will also keep on running. So it's a multiplier effect, and that is what gives us pleasure here, really, to make sure that, indeed, these assets that the federal government uh, spent a lot of money to build are not allowed to waste. We are charged with that responsibility, and we will keep on doing our best. We will continue to be part of that improvement in our current operations. And what has happened here since the last 10 years, since the last 10 years, and in the next one year, in combat with the United States, what we will be seeing? We will be seeing a different thing altogether. So we want to be part of that improvement uh, process and grow with it. Now, the National Hospital Abuja has carried out six open heart surgeries in recent times. The hospital management, which announced the fix, said the operations were carried out in conjunction with a non governmental organization, Hospital for Humanity. The chief medical director of the National Hospital, Dr. Jaffa Momo, says all the patients are in good condition after surgery. The National Hospital Abuja, Nigeria has successfully carried out open heart surgery on six patients as we speak. One is in theatre being operated upon. The idea to recommence our open heart surgery program arose out of the necessity to assist many Nigerians who cannot afford to travel abroad for medical treatment. This, the, the operation is successful. She's working now. She too can talk to you because she's very brilliant. At Al Taraba State, Governor Darius Dixon Ishako has commissioned a 400 kilowatts of a hydropower project in Mambila Plateau. The project located in Kakara village on the Mambila is to revive the Mambila beverage company and kick start business activities in the area. And now the Imo state governor Rocha Sokosha has assured the people of the state of his readiness and his administration to clear salary arrears owed civil servant. The governor who was speaking at a meeting with permanent secretaries also disclosed that the state will be trading a top civil servant in Indonesia. The state head of service, Kalistas Emeline, spoke to newsmen at the end of the meeting between permanent secretaries and the governor. Because his excellency recently, if you all know, he recently visited Singapore. And uh, from the studies carried out over there, uh, it was, it is his intention to commence a program of training permanent secretaries in Singapore so that uh, there will be some form of reformation, transformation, so that our system will get better. And now residents of the federal capital territory who are expecting government sponsorship for pilgrimage may have to seek alternative funding arrangement. This is because the FCT administration has put a stop to the age-old practice. Permanent Secretary in the FCT, Ministry John Chiku gave the hint while receiving updates on the 2015 pilgrimage package from the National Christian Pilgrims Commission Executive Secretary John Kennedy of Parai Napuja. Chiku was said the ministry was towing the line of President Muhammad Buhari cutting the cost of governors. You're still watching Court TV News at Fort Worth. Take a short break. We'll be back with stories outside Algeria. Stay with us.
You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Thank you for being there outside Nigeria now. The U.S. has reopened its embassy in Cuba more than 54 years after it was closed in a symbolic step signaling the warming of ties between both countries. John Kerry, the first U.S. Secretary of State to visit Cuba in 70 years, presided over the ceremony in Havana. The U.S. flag was presented by the same U.S. Marines who brought it down in 1961. Cuba reopened its embassy in Washington last month, but the former Cuban leader, Fidel Castro, has blasted the U.S. for not lifting its trade embargo. In an open letter and on Thursday, Castro said the U.S. owed Cuba millions of dollars because of its 53-year-long embargo. The letter makes no mention of the reopening of the U.S. embassy. Kerry described the hosting of the flag as a historic moment, speaking during the ceremony on Friday. But he also warned that the U.S. would not stop pressing for political change in Cuba. And now the Chinese authorities have ordered the evacuation of residents within a three-kilometer radius of the Tianjin blast site over fears of chemical contamination. The order came after the wind apparently changed direction prompting fears that toxic particles that would have previously been blown out to sea could be blown inland. More so, police confirmed the highly toxic chemical sodium, a white crystalline powder which when inhaled can be rapidly fatal, was found near the site. According to a core CEO Hair news agency, a man was found alive 50 meters from the blast. 85 people are now known to have died in the giant blast in the northeast Chinese port on Wednesday. The chemical is mostly used in manufacturing, fumigation, and in the mining industry to extract gold and silver. And over to sports story now. Outgoing FIFA president Serge Blatter has claimed UEFA president Michel Platini threatened his brother that the FIFA president will end up in jail unless he stepped down. Blatter was re-elected as FIFA president in May against a backdrop of heavy corruption indictments, then surprised the footballing world by announcing his resignation a few days later. A new FIFA election has been announced for February 2016 and former France international Platini has emerged as the frontrunner to replace his Swiss counterpart. Blatter has alleged that Platini has been playing dirty behind the scenes by intimidating the FIFA chief's 80-year-old sibling, Peter Blatter, at the Electoral Congress two days before May's election. Platini has refused to comment on the allegations, although a source close to the UEFA had stated that this false story is the latest in a series of attempts in Zurich to distract the world from the true problems FIFA are facing. Now Liverpool has rejected a bid from Roma to take central defender Mamoudou Sako on a season-long loan. The France international was left on the bench by uh, Brendan Rogers for the Reds' first game of the season against Stoke City as Martin uh, Skretel and Dejan Lovren were parted in defence. This comes after Lovren was given a number of opportunities to impress during pre-season despite struggling following his arrival from Southampton in the summer of 2014. Despite this, Brendan Rogers is not keen to let 25-year-old Sarko depart the club, though his defensive ranks have been boasted over the summer with the signing of Nathaniel Klein and Joe Gomez, as well as Thiago Lori's return from a loan spell at Bordos. Sarko has made just 32 Premier League starts in his two seasons at Anfield due to a number of injury issues, but has become something of a fan favorite due to the confidence that he has shown in possession following his move from Paris to Germany. And finally, in sport, Barcelona defender Dani Alves is confident the Catalans 
can't come back to beat Athletic Bilbao in the Supercopa de Hispana after they were trashed 4-0 by the Bat School in the first leg on Friday. The Champions League winners considered the opener from Mikel San Jose's spectacular 45-yard effort after Mark Andres uh, Stegen's mistake with Aris Aduris compounding their misery when he struck home Athletics fourth from the spot after referee awarded a penalty against Arves. Uh, defeat comes just days after they scrapped a victory in the UEFA Super Cup, beating Sevilla 5-4 thanks to a late goal from Pedro. Arves in six, Luis Enrique's men must respond by giving a top account of themselves in front of their own fans during the return leg of the Supercopa in order to have any hope of winning the trophy. Well, it does wrap on TV News at 4. Thank you for watching. I am Frank Homalape. I'll see you again.